Welcome to the Inheritors series. Uh, in this video we're going to take a look at Potter Palmer of Chicago. Starting with the mansion here. There he is, Potter. Let's take a quick look at uh, his bio. So Potter Palmer, American businessman, uh, started out in retail, got to a point, 1865, he'd had enough of that. Decided to go to Europe for a couple years. Came back to Chicago. And capitalized on the Great Chicago Fire, or the destruction that happened. And name is attached now to a couple um, spectacular buildings, which I'd like to go through in this video. So we'll start with the mansion. Uh, this dated 1885 built, uh, 1950 torn down. Very castle-esque this one. Got a couple pictures of the exterior. One from up the street. Well, this would be early on. Interesting to the rock wall in the foreground. We'll see that in uh, another photo here. There you see it better. So an elevated yard, the rock wall. And there they are. This is, I find very unique as well. This could be a covering of some sort of what was there before. Unique style. And near its end at this point. Looking very old here. Certainly not looking like a uh, 70 year old building or 65 year old building. All right let's look at the interior. They're pretty grainy. Not a lot on this one but there's a couple. So the Gilded Age Classic Gilded Age, so early Chicago post-fire. Um, we had, of course, the World's Fair, 1893. And uh, a lot of buildings in early Chicago that look like this. So the level of craftsmanship here again. If you look at the detail in the ceiling. The chandelier. Very, very detailed. Uh, let's look at the construction story of this building. This is from Chicagology.com. Um, you see here, 1882, the work began. Exterior work completed the next year, so everything done in a year on the exterior. Um, but they have allowed for two years for all the interior work to be finished. Of course, we get the architects credited, and of course the builder. I should say the one who funded the project, but builders never getting credit. The craftsmen, craftsmen never getting credit. Let's take a stroll through this house now. Now looking a lot like a museum, and I know it was used as such later on in its life. It gets a bit grainy as I zoom here, but you get a sense of the wainscoting here and the column work. And again, how the furniture matches the building. I think the story on these uh, furniture um, is that the owner was a collector. And it just so happened they were had such good taste they were able to match things to their home. But I think the furniture seems to go with the building. Look at the detail here. Very extravagant, all of this. Unique, extravagant. This shape here is very eye catching. Would like to see this one in color. Bit of a painting up here. Some curves, everything finished. No square inch left untouched.
you have the curves again and you have some light coming in from above glass ceiling uh, same room curtains closed herringbone floor you see that a lot in all the old world buildings the lights in this one really catch my eye very unique I would love to see this in a clearer resolution very interesting looking again no square inch left unfinished there you have that fireplace with the these two things in the fireplace not looking like something you'd want to burn wood in I did see this for sale online just a piece of the um, balustrade same as previously this one really I find incredible these uh, dragons would you call them on the light fixtures just overly done I, I know the Gilded Age has a reputation for being overly done but you still have to make it and have someone that's able to do it and there must have been either armies of these people at that period of time or something's off about the timeline In 1950, they tore it down. Doesn't look like an easy feat, tearing a building like this down. You look at the rubble. So there he is again. That's a bust of Palmer. Uh, this is apparently from 1871. Not sure why, going so far back, he hadn't really developed a reputation as of a real estate mogul. Still coming off the... Uh, retail end of things let's look at the other buildings attributed to his name so this is a series of basically the same building um, the Palmer house in Chicago this would be the first hotel that didn't make it through the fire this would be the second which was torn down in the 20s and this would be the one that replaced this one so we'll start with the original and the Wikipedia page walks you through the three versions of this hotel. They call it the house. First Palmer House. So 1870 opened. Burned one year later. So it lasted only a year. Uh, burned in the Great Fire. And the second one had to be built. So let's look at the first one. So we are to believe that this building here lasted only one year. Uh, looking very finished around the outside of it. Curbs. Um, all of this lasted one year. And there's the devastation from the Chicago fire in that location. Yes, fire can create this type of damage, apparently. And then we get to the second version of the hotel. So if I'm to understand the timeline here, um, the second one was built mainly of iron and brick, widely advertised as the world's only fireproof hotel. Um, saying here it was completed in 1875. So, I'm to believe that all of this happened within a five year period. The first one was built, burnt in a fire, and less than four years from when it was burnt, burnt into the fire. The new one was completed and up and running. So this one went up lickety split. And there's a bit of a, an anomaly here in the timeline. I've got this um, talking about how it began. Construction on this began in 1870 and it was completed in 1873. So does not jive with the uh, Wikipedia timeline, which is interesting. Uh, this one I like, it's giving you some visuals of what you might have seen on the inside. And a spectacular view here as well. Horse and buggy days, there's the horses pulling the 
trams. There we see what it might have looked like in the restaurant. I suspect this is up by the dome. Pool hall. Check out the ceiling in this. Now people will say, oh, it's just a picture. Well, the picture had to be taken from something. Uh, the ceiling, I would have loved to have seen that as a photograph. And a barber shop, of course. This piece caught my eye. Central decorative, not sure exactly. But again, no detail. No detail left to spare. This is from the 1880s, this picture. Very grainy, I know. I apologize for that. It's the best I could find. But you do still get a sense of the detail here. And remember, they slapped this thing up and I think they're allowing for four years. Or three, depending on which timeline you, you look at. And the third version of the hotel. Um, built in the 20s. In the same location where the previous one was, apparently. And went up really quickly as well. Wikipedia says the, the third hotel went up between 1923 and 1925 in that same location. So, two years for this one. And I've got a couple pictures of the interior. I'm not sure if it's the interior from the um, second Palmer Hotel or the first. I would say this one is from the second. This is going back a bit further. Um, Again, you have that dome look. Get a real sense here of how amazing the architecture and the interior finish on this building would have been. You see these cherubs up here. Up here. 1800s. It's looking a lot more modern, of course, but no less spectacular. You see the paintings on the ceiling there curved work. Very difficult if you've ever worked in the industry to do this type of finished work with any sort of curve involved. I suspect that's the ceiling looking from below straight up or a ceiling if not the one we just saw. A couple other finishes here for you. Again the cherubs. Candelabra. Chandelier. All right. So this is just a quick peek at Potter Palmer of Chicago, uh, the mansion and the three hotels. I just wanted to share what I found. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please like, share, and subscribe, and feel free to comment. Uh, I'm happy to discuss any of this further with anyone who watches my videos. I'm just seeking, seeking like anyone else. Thanks for watching.